Good morning, saints. Uh, thank you. Don't really have anything prepared. Rob texted me last night at, I don't know, six ish. Paul sick, Terry sick, can't get a hold of Keith. You can preach, right? I guess so. We're going to look at uh, John 7. There is something I want to read. If I can find it, bear with me. We're kind of skipping ahead. Thank you, sir. And with this pestilence that is among us today, uh, this was foretold. Earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence. Uh, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised about any of this. Uh, it is more... Uh, I guess surprising when it hits home. Uh, we do have, everybody knows someone who has been sick with COVID. Uh, but uh, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, and blessed be God, it is our privilege to be assured that the hand of death cannot strike us down before God's predestined hour arrives for us to go hence. The enemy may war against us, and he may be permitted to strike our bodies, but shorten our lives he cannot, any more than he could Job's. A frightful epidemic of disease may visit the neighborhood in which I live, but I am immune till God suffers me to be affected. Unless it is his will for me to be sick or to die, no matter how the epidemic may rage, nor how many of those around me may fall victims to it. It cannot harm me. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom in Him will I trust. His reassuring voice answers me, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Should any be inclined to think we have expressed ourselves too strongly, we ask them to ponder the following scriptures. Is there not an appointed time for man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hireling that is strictly numbered? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. <clears throat> Let not your hearts be troubled, saints. Amen. To the lesson. Okay, we went over, well, I think I stopped around verse 17. Uh, you know the story. Uh, after these things, verse 1, Jesus walked in Galilee. Um, really, his Galilee and ministry is coming to a close. It's never recorded in John that he went back to Galilee. So... After these things, the Feast of Tabernacles is at hand. He would not go up with his brothers. When he gets there, or when he was supposed to be there, the Jews looked for him, couldn't find him. Where is this man? Uh, 14, now at the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never been taught? 
Jesus answered them, My doctrine is not of mine, but him that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself, better yet, from himself, uh, whose message originates with him. Again, we can test today's preachers with those words. What, does, what is his message? Who does it glorify? Does he seek his own personal gain? Does he, or does he speak Christ crucified? The same, he adds that. The same is true and no unrighteousness is in him. 19. Did not Moses give you the law? And none of you keep it the law. Why go ye about to kill me? Turns the tables on them. Now Jesus knew the thoughts of all men. No one had to tell him that, hey, these Jews are trying to kill you. He knew that. Um, so you have, I want to point out these classes of people here. I'm going to try to. Again, last couple weeks ago I said there's Jews. That's the religious rulers of his day, the Jews. Uh, and then there's the people, the commoners. And so he's here um, speaking. It's the Jews who marveled at his saying, the educated, the rulers of his day, Pharisees, Sanhedrin, Sadducees. They marveled. So he is speaking to them. Uh, he speaketh of himself. And again, did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keep the law. That was quite an indictment to say that the Pharisees did not keep the law. I mean, they had it written on their clothing. To, to, so <laughs> if you were to say to a Pharisee that he did not know the law, I'm not sure what would happen, but... And listen to what the Pharisees don't reply to this, the rulers, but the people. Again, 19, did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Ouch. Why do ye go about to kill me? The people answered, not the Pharisees, the rulers, not the Jews, the people, and said... Thou hast the devil who goeth about to kill thee. The people didn't know the intentions of the Jews, the religious rulers. And so they think Jesus is crazy. These Pharisees, are, these are good guys. They know the law. Why would they try to kill you? But Jesus knew, knew what they wanted. And so he says... He ignores that. He answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Again, chapter 5, the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. We went over that, yes. If it was the eighth day, that male child was circumcised. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it doesn't matter. They circumcise that child even on the Sabbath day. So Jesus is pleading his case. You do this, why can't I heal a man on the Sabbath day? Why do you get all worked up over it? Well, because they hated him and they wanted to kill him. And they were looking for something to accuse him with. That's why they brought it up. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them of Jerusalem. So these are just other people in Jerusalem. Is not this he whom they seek to kill? <laughs> Apparently it was common. The, the religious leaders hated him and they wanted to kill him. 26, but lo, he speaketh boldly and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know that indeed this is the very Christ? Do the Jews not know that this is Christ? 
Why couldn't they see who he was? Because they weren't educated? Nope. They're not his. They don't have eyes to see. Uh, I was in Isaiah last week and someone answered, asked the question. Isaiah's message was pretty much rejected, but that was foretold as well. But someone asked, why didn't God send someone, you know, maybe better than Isaiah to, uh, it doesn't matter. It wasn't Isaiah. There was nothing wrong with the messenger or the message. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed is good. The seed is the word of God. It's the ground that's bad. They didn't believe because they're not his. His seed does not abide in them. The ground is bad. Jesus himself came and they rejected him. Every class of people rejected him. The religious rulers, the Jews, the commoners. The total depravity of man is so complete. His own brothers did not believe in him. Twenty-eight. Then cried. I want you to. It's hard to. You know, there's there's not very many exclamation points. There are, but it's hard to get the context of this. Whenever you see Jesus cried, he cried. He cried out, "Lazarus, come forth." He didn't have a PA system. I mean, he cried out. So twenty-eight. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying. Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. They did not know the Father, and the only way to know the Father is through the Son. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour. Again, we noted my time has not come, and my hour. Hour speaks of his death. My hour has not yet come. You can see this restraint, this, this restraining hand of God. They wanted to kill him. I mean, ugh, the motive was there, the intention was there, but they could not kill him. Not until the appoint, his appointed hour was come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? That's an interesting, 31, interesting verse. I don't know if that's a true belief, a, a true faith in who he is, because why would they say when, when Christ cometh? This is Christ. When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than this guy over here, than this guy, this son of Joseph? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. It's not my hour. I'm here for a little while, <laughs> but you can't touch me until that time has come. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that, he, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto his, the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? They cannot understand the things of the Spirit. They have no clue what he's talking about. Spiritually dead. 
having not spirit. Thirty six. What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me? And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Couldn't understand them. Why? Because they're carnal. That's the flesh, and it'll always be the flesh. You can't reform it, you can't dress it up. <sighs> you gotta crucify it. You gotta kill it. I like what Keith says, what I feel the old man rising up inside of me. What God kills stays dead. <laughs> How sad, completely rejected by his brothers, his countrymen. They could not see who he was. His own brothers didn't believe in him. I do want to point this out. Again, uh, these, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a Feast of Jehovah, the seven Feasts of Jehovah. And really, why does the Scripture record it as the Jews' Feast? It had degraded into religious ceremony, uh, tradition. Uh, no longer the Feast of Jehovah. It's... The Feast of the Jews. I thought that was interesting. There we go. About the Now the regular inhabitants of Jerusalem come before us. They too make bare their spiritual condition. And sheltering behind the rulers, they showed, that, showed what little anxiety they had to discover for themselves whether or not Christ was preaching the truth of God. Verily, there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The common people were no better than the rulers, the Lord's brethren. No more believed on Him than the Jews. The inhabitants of Jerusalem had no more heart for Christ than they of the other provinces. How plain it was then that no man would come to Christ except he had been drawn of the Father. It is still so today. There it is. No man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him. There's something in those that are born from above. That seed that germinates when the Spirit speaks to him. Human nature is the same the world over. It is nothing but the distinguishing grace of God that ever makes one to differ from another. Only by grace. That's the only way anybody's going to make it. Yes, amen. The men of Jerusalem deem themselves wiser than their credulous rulers. The religious leaders might stand in some doubt, but they knew whence Christ was. Yeah, all, he came from Nazareth. No prophet comes from Nazareth. Messiah is supposed to be born from Bethlehem. This guy lives in Nazareth. <laughs> Couldn't they look up? Well, did anyone ask him, where were you born? You think Jesus would have told him? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Euphrata. They didn't care. Supposing that Joseph was his father, they were satisfied that he was merely a man. We know this man. He's just the man. That's the that's the the trend of their thoughts. And he's just we know this man. What did the people say earlier in verse ten? Eh, no. Twelve. He's a good man. He's just a man. What humiliation he suffered. Despised and rejected. A man of sorrows. So he cried out. 
Ye both know me and know whence I am. I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. <laughs> what love the Father has showed to us that he sent his only begotten Son. There was no other thing that could be done. The blood of bulls and goats was impossible to remove sin. So he sent his only begotten, his covenant son. Hmm. Amazing. That's right. No man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. Not until the 69th week of Daniel 9.24 had run its course. Then Messiah the Prince could be cut off. All the hatred of men and all the enmity of Satan and his host could not hasten Christ's appointed death until God's foreordained hour struck. And the incarnate Son bowed to his Father's good pleasure he was immortal, and blessed be God, it is our privilege, privilege to be assured that the hand of death cannot strike us down before God's predestined hour Amen. arrives for us to go home. Hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to quit. I did want to point out the last half of this chapter. Uh, 37, in the last day. You can see the, the feast is at hand. In the midst of the feast he went up. Now the last day of the feast, which is considered the great day. Jesus, did I read before that? Okay, I've read 36. Yeah, okay, I did. Thank you. So the last day of the feast is the greatest day of the feast. Now, I believe, I've been told by two different people, that on the last day of the feast, the high priest went down to the pool of Siloam with a cup of water, came back to the temple, and poured it out. Remember, the feast is... A remembrance of the Israelites being delivered from Egypt, coming out of Egypt in the wilderness. And we, if you, of course you know the story. He smote the rock, and he spoke to the rock. Water came out. So the priest went down, scooped up some water, and would pour it out in front of the people. So that's what would happen on the last day of the feast. So Jesus, this is great. And this is probably what he was teaching about, although the Spirit didn't record it earlier in this chapter when he goes into the temple and they said he teacheth boldly probably some reference to the feast and he stood up and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water In chapter 5, the impotent man is dead in sin, needs to be resurrected, brought to life. Here he's receiving the Spirit. But the Spirit, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of, the, many of the people there, and when, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. 
But some said, again, their carnal minds, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Again, the, the gospel, the truth brings division. Always has. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers of the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why haven't you brought him to us? <laughs> the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Remember when they came to arrest him in the garden? He said, I am he. And they fell over backwards. He's going to consume his enemies by the word of his mouth. I am he. Oh. Come, Lord Jesus. Never man spake like this man. Go get them yourself. I ain't touching them. But uh, the, then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? We know of one. Nicodemus saith <laughs> saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law, law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. False. False. Jonah, the son of Amittai, was from Galilee. Gath Hefer. And every man went unto his own house. Why? Because they were living in booths, tabernacles. Temporary structures. I love the Gospel of John. Thank y'all for putting up with me. Rob, can you pray for us? Father, you're so good. We you love your people. We don't even have words to express how much we know that you love us, Lord. We just bless this time that you gave us, Lord. Bless you, Father. Bless your soul, Lord. We desire to be conformed to his image. Christ in us is the hope of glory. He in us and we in him. And Lord, just send us out, Lord, in the power of your spirit, Lord. Cause us to seek you. Cause us to see you in all things. As this turmoil goes around in this world, and this sickness, this disease, the wars, all that's coming on this, this world, Lord, it's all been foreordained by you, Lord. Nothing takes you by surprise. We are on the throne. You still rule and reign. And we bless your holy name for Lord, Father. Those, Lord, that are a little bit weak in the faith or strength in their faith, let them know that you do rule and reign. And nothing touches any of your people, Lord, that you don't allow. And it's all to their glory, Lord. We're living stones being built up. The holy tabernacle for you, Lord. And we look with expectation. We look up. Look for that redemption, that drop by, Lord. And we know that it's sooner than it was yesterday. And it'll be sooner. Thank you, Father. Just bless your holy name. Send your people away in peace, Lord. Give them the peace that is of God. That God is our peace. Thank you, Lord. Amen.